Israel. Money, they say, is the root of evil, but no, it's not the root of evil. It's the love of money that it's the root of evil. Let me tell you what money is. I already told you what money is not. Money answers all things. Money is a defense. You know, I'm a Christian, so Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 2 says, money is a defense. In other words, we need money to build bridges, to build roads, to provide welfare services to the people, and to make lives better. And in Lagos, in particular, the government of Lagos, the main agency responsible for making those money available is the Lagos Internal Revenue Service, what many people call the LIRS. And we have the privilege to have with us today the chairman, the executive chairman of that organization, the LIRS, Mr. Ayo Super. Mr. Super, are you ready? Excellent. Yeah. Good to see you. How are you doing? Very well, thank you, Dayo. Is thank it a relaxed you. evening for you? Thanks for having me on your show. Thank you so much. Is it a relaxed evening for you? Or you're yes. under pressure? <laughs> Never. <laughs> In Lagos, we don't work under pressure. We are calm. And the, and the reason why I ask that is because now you the, the, the COVID-19 has affected your finances and your generation capacity a lot. You're probably not eating your monthly target like you were able to do. In, you know, in the past. But the reality is that the needs and what to spend money on has not gone away. Whereas you're short of funds right now. How, how, what does that do to you? Does that put you under pressure at all? Because the roads are still there to be fixed. The lives are still there to be touched. The mouths are still there to be fed. But yet you don't have all the money that you need to generate because businesses are shut down. Yes, uh, to some extent, I, I'll say that uh, you're right in in all your assertions, because the pandemic has hit everybody globally, worldwide. So it's not just Lagos feeling the pressure. Nigeria is feeling the pressure. Africa is feeling the pressure. Europe, the world over, we are all under pressure at the moment. Because, you know, yes, the pandemic touches on, on health, but, you know, it's sort of shut down the economy, so to speak. or slowed down the economy. I won't say shut down. We were partially shut down during the lockdown. But uh, right now, yes. yeah, there's been a phase reopening. But generally, uh, if we take all everything step by step, yes, the, the pandemic hit us like March is when uh, February, we got our real first case, the Italian case. Mm. In, in yes. Nigeria. And uh, what then happened? The economy started to shut down. Before then, the global oil prices crashed. With that mm. crash came, uh, I'd say, devaluation of the Naira ultimate currency. Yeah. Unemployment led to, you know, serious downward pressure on IGR. Now, for the nation, we all know that oil is a mainstay. Oil mm. has always given us 80% of our foreign exchange earnings. So mm. for Nigeria, it's a big problem. Yes, oil is not, you know, is, is not that same percentage in, in, in the GDP of, of the Federation. But then it's a significant, you know, a, a crash that happened. So mm. in Lagos, we were very proactive, started looking at it. And yes, there was a lockdown about the second week of, of March. April. Of, of April, yes. April, last, yes. Last week of March was when, when uh, the workforce was reduced in Lagos State. His Excellency, or rather Mr. Governor Babajide Sawolu, Announced. I still call him His Excellency too. <laughs> yeah. He's had to let go. <laughs> he, 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 however, prefers that we refer to him. As yes, the refer to us. So his wishes are command. So we'll just call <laughs> him Mr. Governor for now. So Mr. Governor started to wind down. You know, things slowly. He reduced the amount of uh, of Lagos State workers who could go to work. So you know, we sat down immediately and started to think about. Uh, 
business continuity plan and how to contain, you know, all the problems that we knew would come, you know, onto us. By the time the lockdown came in April, you know, of course, we all started to sweat in the nation mm. and in Lagos. But our sweat wasn't so bad in Lagos because we had always planned, you know, for this yes. thing. Not that we were thinking that, you know, things would be so bad health-wise and all that. But we've always looked at uh, a situation whereby we would need to work remotely. So mm. over time, what we have been doing is to strengthen all our electronic channels. We have what you call e-tax, which is um, an end-to-end -end tax administration solution. And what e-tax does is to say, gentlemen, you can all stay at home mm. and just walk through me. So mm. all the members of, uh, of, of the public, residents of Lagos, taxpayers, are able to interact with the LIRS without necessarily coming to the LIRS, mm. without the LIRS employees physically being in the office. So mm. we drew up a business continuity plan, like I said, premised on our electronic channels. One mm. was the e-tax I spoke about. Second was our contact center, because naturally a lot of people would want to get in touch with, with the agency, with all their tax issues. You know. Mm. So with e-tax, taxpayers are able to log in, they can register upon registration. They can set up their assessments. They can make payments online because it has several payment platforms with which you know, they can make their payments. They can also issue receipts by the, all this from the comfort of their homes. So they can do mm. it in their kitchen, in their bathroom, even in their, mm. in, in their vehicles, as long as they have uh, um, a printer they are able to print mm. so you issue your receipts also on e-tax we have a chat on it mm. anytime you go on e-tax you can actually you know online type in all your questions make all your inquiries and you have people who will attend to you also with the contact center as we speak all the staff in our contact center are working from home because quite a large number, almost half of them, live in open states. Hmm. Wow. Because and with the border shut down? Border shut down, there's no way they could actually come to the office. So what we did as part of our business continuity plan was to buy laptops for people who didn't have laptops. Hmm. We allowed them certain access to data to servers so that mm. you know they can make all the inquiries they want. We bought handsets, we bought mm. data, we bought airtime, all this just to allow continuous you know communication. So mm. that proved very helpful to us because quite a few taxpayers would call in wanting to pay their taxes but not knowing how to go about it because if you remember all the banks were also shut. So mm. that helped us to a great extent. Also, mm. we had mm. to maintain and keep our data center running, you know, because the data center is what houses a lot of our data. Yes, yes. So even with the lockdown, we had to physically, you know, our head of IT and members of his team had to dash to the office from time to time because of all the other factors, you know, like NEPA. NEPA. <laughs> <laughs> it might go on in Vata, you know, there were all sorts of issues. So from time to time, while it would go into alternative uh, uh, power source, you know, would have to go around to make sure things are working well. So the data center was maintained and bingo, that's how we were able to work and we were able to get a reasonable amount. Yes, we have dropped revenue, no doubt about that. 
there's no way we will not drop revenue because revenue is a function of economic mm -hmm. activity. If businesses mm -hmm. are shut, then we cannot get taxes from them. You know, so that is what I, I, I was, Mr. Chairman. Yes, I, I was going to ask at, at that point, how hard were you eat? in the period of the, in the month of April, May in particular, April in particular, when there was a total lockdown, how hard were you hit? April had a total lockdown. Okay, pre-COVID, we generally made about 80% of our budget. We hit 80%, mm -hmm. 80, 81% steadily, first three months. So come April, the numbers went down, but we did in April, which is the worst month, which is when everything was on complete lockdown. We did 61% mm. of our budget, which translated to approximately 25.5 billion Naira. Mm. Mm. Yes, our pre-COVID numbers average about 32, mm. 32 billion. Yes. So let's say effectively we had a drop of about 21%. Although that's not comparing it with the, the actual budget, you know, we were yet, you know, we're just getting off the mark really with the new budget. Mm. The new budget pre-COVID was 42 billion, but we were doing mm. an average of 32 and 34 billion. 32. So, yes. Wow. Do you see a comeback in the next three, four months? Oh yes, since April, it's been on the upward increase. Every month we do much better than the previous month. So yeah, we are wow. starting. We're 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 within touch of what we were mm. doing before. Mm. In the next, that, that's amazing. In the next two days, we will know what we did in June. But in June, <laughs> we know that we've gone very close to the pre-COVID period, and this is despite the fact that a lot of companies are still shut. Mm. The amount of compliance has gone down. Mm. But, you know, using all our wisdom and all mm. our strategies, we've been able to walk through, you know, the major taxpayers and mm. try to maintain some reasonable level of performance. So we're not doing too badly. Had we not mm. put all these things in, in, in motion, you know, in place, yes. The first last year is when we actually launched the the e tax solution. Mm. So that has been a great blessing. In Lagos, we're very proactive, we do everything, we're forward thinking all the time, and that has paid off for mm. us. M Mr. Chairman. Do you consider, so you're talking 24 billion, you're talking 30 billion, and people always say Lagos is a rich state, Lagos has money, Lagos has money. You are the tax man, you're the money. Do you really think Lagos is rich? Does Lagos really have money? When you look at, for example, what your revenue base is, the GDP, the expenditure, does, is Lagos really a rich state? Well, you know, when you talk about being rich or wealth, it's always very relative. Yes. Lagos and New York, which you can't really do. <laughs> <laughs> the state is probably not as much as what the fire stations in New York. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. But really, yeah. to other, you know, Lagos is the fifth largest economy in Africa, for instance. Mm -hmm. So it's for you guys to look at us and see how rich we are. But in terms mm. of what we need, what we require, there's a huge infrastructure gap in Lagos. The amount mm. of money we need to put all the roads right, you know, mm. to, to allow Mr. Governor execute all his projects based on the mm. pillars of themes, as you know. Yes. You know, the amount is huge. So when you think about that, you know, Yes, the revenue is good, but also the expenditure profile is very, very high. Mm, very you know, high. Lagos has been the epicenter of COVID, for instance. So mm. we have a lot of isolation centers. You know, we have a lot of infections. So we have to be prepared 
you know, uh, Professor Abayomi, Commissioner for Health, has done a fantastic job. The incident commander, Mr. Governor, has done more than a wonderful job. Mm. Lagos is globally acclaimed at the moment. We're doing very well. Now, to put all those isolation centers and all the health centers and the hospitals in place. In place. Costs a lot of money. Mm. Then we're looking at all the other areas. Education. There are so many. In Lagos, we have, I mean, arguably we have about 20, between 24 and 25 million inhabitants. So mm. how do you maintain and service 24 million people? Lagos is the smallest state. It has the smallest space. Even that space is largely around water. So the land mm. space is not much. But mm. the resources that are required to maintain Lagos, very huge. So mm. if you look at revenue and required expenditure, it's quick for you to say, oh, Lagos is not rich. But mm. then relative to many other states, relative to African nations, for Lagos to be the fifth largest economy, mm. not, very, not, 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 not bad at all. So what would you say the lessons that you've learned in terms of tax management and revenue generation in this period, COVID period? Um, and, you know, what lessons have you learned for the administration of LIRS and tax management in Lagos? And what would you do going forward? What would you do differently? Even in charge of administration, in charge of manpower, for example, you had to buy um, laptops and gadgets for your staff now. I'm sure those are bringing new realities of what we now call the new normal. So what are your new normal lessons? Well, there are a lot of new normal lessons. Number one lesson, things are no longer the same. <laughs> That's the starting point. But <laughs> things can never be the same, right? Now, we know for sure, we knew before that we needed to leverage on technology. But mm. I tell you, it's never been more pronounced as it is. Look at mm. the example I gave before, when, when the, the, the uh, state was on lockdown. We were yes. still working. You know, we were all working. So there has to be a, a, a lot of investment in technology. That's mm. number one lesson. We all have to know how we use our gadgets. Even the residents of Lagos, when the banks were shut, they couldn't, they couldn't go to the bank, they couldn't draw money. Some people, a lot of people did mm. not even have a, a bank card. ATM card, yes. Yes, they would go to the ATMs. So that lesson is also out there that you should try and maintain some element of online uh, 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 transactions with your bank. Presence, yes. So for us also, it's very clear that we have to, you know, do things using technology. For instance, we have a lot of tax audits, you know, when we try to mm -hmm. mop up our back duty, we have what you call uh, tax audit exercises. Then you have the reconciliation exercises. You have people going back and forth between our office and their own offices. Our reconciliation meetings now, we are starting from tomorrow, I believe, to have virtual meetings. Mm. So all the TAMA agents, all the consultants, and all the taxpayers need not leave their offices anymore we can transact yeah. with them. In the past, even when we had reconciliation exercises, people who don't want, who are not serious, will say, ah, the MD traveled, he's in America, he went to <laughs> he went to London, so we can't have the reconciliation. That can't happen anymore because hmm. he simply just has, need, he needs to have internet uh, uh, access. Yes. And the meetings are going on. Even in our offices right now, when we have management meetings, we have them virtually mm. because we are following what Mr. Governor has told yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. Social distancing protocols. Social distancing protocols. So when we have meetings and we are more than six, 
you know, we just play it safe. And mm. we have, during the lockdown also, we had management meetings. We were meeting regularly. Apart from LRS meetings, I had state meetings with Ministry of Finance, with budget, with all the various financial family in, in Lagos State. So mm. that's what we're saying now. We need to leverage seriously on technology. That's that's mm. a new normal. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, are you are you biased towards increasing the tax burden or increasing the tax net? Uh, that's a very easy. easy. <laughs> <laughs> There's no. This is not the time to increase the tax burden. A lot of companies are not doing very well right now. And especially the smaller ones, the SMEs, all mm. over the world, the SMEs are the engine room for any nation. Mm. If you want serious development, if you want high levels of, of employment, you know, you really have to make sure that the small, uh, the smaller companies are functioning very mm. well. All over the world, they are the, they are the largest employers of, 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 of labor. So in our own case, rather than increase tax rates, which we can't even do because mm. the taxes are legislated in Abuja by the National Assembly. Most of the taxes that we follow, personal income tax, you know, stamp duties, act, withholding tax, all these things fall out really from federal laws. So mm. even if we wanted, we cannot increase tax rates and it's not even wise to increase tax rates anyway mm -hmm. or rather not no, let me not say it's not wise it's not wise to allow the federating units to be able to increase tax rates let me give you an example if a uh, dio plc you know <laughs> did business in say 10 states you have employees spread all over the 10 states across yes and then taraba increases or your state increases, or she increases their own. You know, there will not be any uniformity. There's just going to be a lot of confusion. And you want a lot of foreign direct investment. Foreign investors, they do a lot of studies before, you know, they decide to invest in, in nations. If they do a sort of search on Nigeria and they see that uh -uh, if I bring employees in, if I employ local employees, I don't even know how to plan you know, to plan my taxes. So for that reason, it's not a bad idea. Yes, we all desire fiscal federalism, but it's not yeah. a bad idea for the federal to have a government. central. Yes, to have a central uh, system whereby tax system, all, the, yeah. all the units so that there's more certainty and, you know, and that kind of thing. So to answer your question directly, rather than increase the tax burden rather than increase tax rates it's better for us to spread our net and that is what we are presently doing again leveraging on technology we try to enumerate enumeration is when you know we bring more taxpayers into the net so when you have more taxpayers into the net you can generate much larger amounts and then you know it enables better development it don't, you, you are not overburdening you know the residents of a state so yes to answer our question we'd rather increase you know number of taxpayers in the system you, you talked about you know m making things easier for business you know what we technically call ease of doing business but there's still issues of double taxation for example the local government charging taxing on some things and the state government and different agencies particular hotel businesses hospitality businesses how, what are you doing to manage that and bridge that gap Okay, well, this is one of the frequently asked questions <laughs> almost everywhere I go. <laughs> and just repeat. Some understand what they're saying. Some don't even understand it. They just say, ah, too much tax. We're paying too much tax. Now, um, on the question of multiple taxes, a lot of us first must understand what a tax is. Tax is. 
right? There are taxes, there are levies and administrative Yes, taxes. levies, yes, yes, yes. But everybody just mixes the whole thing and says, ah, Lagos State is charging too much. We have three tiers of government, federal, state, and local governments. The, the taxes that are collectible by each of these three tiers are well pronounced, very clear. They are approved on uh, tax levies, you know, act, uh, um, list, takes care of all that and recommends who is going to administer any type of tax. So if local governments introduce administrative charges, who are we to really complain? They have to generate revenue in order to provide their services. They have guidelines and it's expected that you know they will follow their guidelines. We strictly only administer the taxes as provided by the Federation, apart from the consumption tax. Consumption tax is the only local tax, if I want to use that word local tax, because it was enacted by the Lagos State House of Assembly. Aside from that, what people complain about is administrative charges. If you are receiving service, for instance, Loma comes to empty your garbage cans every once, maybe twice in a week or three times in a week, you pay Loma charges. That's standard. Mm. You're getting service, getting direct benefit. If we go by the definition of taxes, you are not supposed to get direct benefit from payment of taxes. Taxes ensue as a result of a social contract. There's a social contract binding the state and the citizens of the state. The government is expected to govern well, while the citizens are expected to behave in a certain manner, follow all, certain the, manner. Follow all the rules that define a civilized society. And then your contribution to making that civilized society happen is what you pay as taxes. So you don't get a direct benefit. You're just contributing you know, to the development of your state or of your nation. So this is where a lot of people get it wrong. When they have to pay administrative taxes, they just say, ah, too many taxes, too many taxes. But <laughs> nevertheless, it's expected through what we call a joint revenue committee. There's supposed to be some level of harmonization. There's supposed to be yes. some level of cooperation between the state and the local governments. We're supposed to meet regularly, you know, to make sure that we're doing the right thing and we're not, you know, overburdening the citizens the people. Of, of the nation. So that is, that's my take on, on that question. Uh, and so how are you leveraging on the large informal sector? In particular, you know, one of the challenges we had during the COVID when there was a lockdown was that because people really end per day, people sell and they live on day-to-day -day income, they were really affected. Um, but that's a huge community. That's a huge demographic. People in the informal sector of the economy. How are you leveraging on, the, on that market, on that revenue potential and base? Okay. Um, I must admit that there's still a lot of work to be done in Lagos State in terms of ensuring, that, ensuring tax compliance of the informal sector. The informal sector is likely made up of tradesmen, artisans, uh, market men, market women, et cetera, et cetera. Over time, it's been a bit difficult, you know, to get many of them in the tax net because they are highly mobile. They're almost mm. in They fly low, they fly below the radar. So it's difficult to get them into the net. But through technology, we are very determined to make sure that, you know, we spread that tax net so that these um, in people who work informally, you know, it's, it's easier to get people in, in, in the formal sector because they have a fixed base, they have an office, right? 
and yes. employers act as our agents. So if you don't want to be sanctioned, you make sure that you deduct taxes before you pay salaries. It's not the same in the informal sector because a lot of them are self-employed. Yes. They are not they are not in a structured environment. They don't keep accounting books the way we would love them mm. to keep their accounting books. Many mm. of them not some of them are not highly educated. So it mm. becomes a challenge for them to use computers, you know, to take care and record their, their affairs, their business affairs. But what we're doing right now, we are recalibrating. We've gone to the drawing board to see how we can catch them more effectively. So what we've done is we've marked Lagos along the lines of Ibile, you know, Mm. All of us know what Ibile is. Ikorodu, Badagri, Ekwe. Yes. Uh, Ikeja and Lagos. Ikeja and Lagos Island. So what we are doing is we're going to have teams dedicated in each division. We're going to have, we've already developed a software. We have a software. We call it Ibile Hub. Now, the, 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 the um, software has certain features that, that we have not used in the past, especially the area of payment. We are going to allow instrumental payments. In the past, we have not allowed instrumental payments. But you can imagine wow. the welder or hmm. the, vulcanize, the vulcanizer who, if you tell him to pay 10,000 naira, Hmm. Can't at pay, once he can't pay that 10,000 at once but if you allow him to spread it over a period of time even on a daily basis he's ready to cooperate and make that payment because hmm. welders vulcanizers all of them are interested you know they like the development they like the, the environment of lagos which is why they're operating here so yes they really, a lot of nigerians want to pay tax let's not talk hmm. about the evaders a lot of people, once they see value, like they are seeing in Lagos, they are very interested in paying mm. their taxes. You know, projects are all over. Mr. Governor mm. is doing so much using his pillar called themes that we yes. talked about earlier. So, Ibile Hub, the software, has that capability of allowing payments and installments with immediate printing of the receipts. Mm. Some of the other features it has is that of enumeration. It will capture you with biometrics. And we all know the importance of biometrics. Of that, yes. We have, we have a lot of identity management companies all over. Many of them, some have failed. Some you register. Five years down the line, you can't even get your card. You can't get <laughs> other details. So there are also yes. identity management companies. But there are some credible ones, you know, like the one run by NIPS, which, which has a BVN, the almighty BVN that we all talk about. We also have NIMSI, the mm. National um, ID Card. And um, yes. more recently, in more recent years, even the, the uh, immigration, internal affairs, through the issuance of pass, passports. Passports. It's, it's getting a lot more credible. Even look at FR, FRSC now, with the driver's licenses and MVAA, of course. That's the Lagos agency. We are now getting to a point whereby, without biometrics, you can't get your license anymore. Many years ago, when I was mm. in school, you know, um, when I was in school outside the country, for instance, there were foreigners who had Nigerian driver's licenses. People who had never stepped mm. on the shores of, of Nigeria. <laughs> a Nigerian driver's license in London or, or, or wherever. So once we have credible identity management systems, you know, system place, it really helps. So Ibile mm. Hub is also 
going to come with this future, which means that mm. once you do your thumbprint, we are able to identify you because even twins do not have the same thumbprints. Mm. You know, everybody's print is different. So in the past, mm. people who work in the markets, for instance, if you go on Monday, you see them in that market. On Tuesday, they are in Alaba. On Wednesday, they are in Ladipo market. So where exactly mm. are you going to track them? You know, even when it comes to residents, they live all over. They yes. Live two days in Mushi. If you go there four days later, they moved, you know, to another area. So that, that's a big problem for us as a tax mm. authority. It's very difficult for us to track certain people because Nigerians don't even have the habit of informing, you know, organizations when they move. They just move, they move. Even in a lot of mm. companies, the staff there, the company doesn't know where the staff live. When they are getting employed, they have one address. In between, yeah. moving around. So we're going to have a better way of tracking people. Also in the past, because there was no biometrics, you can register in Lagos Island today. Next week, you go and register in Shomolu. The third week, you register somewhere else because there was no <laughs> biometrics at the time. So biometrics. Uh, it's another feature that we are bringing in. Then we're going to have a lot more collaboration with all the market leaders, all the yarologers and the babaologers. You know, they are going to be part of, of, of the whole uh, uh, value chain of, of consultants who will help us. Because if you don't have the, the um, yarologer, on your side, you might not make a lot of uh, uh, inroad into the status. Yes, those markets. Who, who work in that market. So, like I said, with the Ville Hub, we have a, a lot of uh, plan, and we're, we're, we were about to launch it when COVID came calling. So, mm. we have plans. We need to move into the informal sector. We need to make sure that, you know, they are also contributing to the development of the state. So that, that, that's what I'll, I'll stop there for now. When we are ready, and when <laughs> we, are, we will come out, we will inform all members of the public, we will let them know how the system works. Mm. Excellent, Mr. Chairman. So my own measure have had the greatest impact on boosting tax revenue in Lagos. Lagos is way ahead of many of the other states. What would you say are the measures that have had the greatest impact? in boosting our tax, you know, revenue? Well, it's all part of uh, being organized, coming from Lagos. Everything in Lagos is done excellently. That's why it's called the center of excellence. So Lagos mm. has been very, very fortunate to have a lot of good administrators, you know, and um, I can't pass this opportunity without, you know, uh, uh, mentioning that Ashura Jibola Ahmed Tinumbu has made a great difference to mm. this economy. And I Absolutely. say that with every sense of humility because he is the one who decided, wrote the plan, had the vision for LIRS, set it up. Mm. At the time he was setting up LIRS, you know, it wasn't uh, the norm. The state was gener generating about 600 million, you know, mm. a month. Compare that in January, we did 34 billion. Compare 634 mm. billion. There's a whole lot of difference. So you need vision. Mm. That vision has driven the state of Lagos. Again, mm. maybe one can also mention, you know, for the younger ones many years ago when a certain general was the president of Nigeria. Ashuaju Bola Ahmed Tinumbu decided to take governance to all the nooks and crannies mm. of Lagos. Lagos mm. had only 20 local governments. There are some other states who don't have as many people, but they have 50 local governments, mm. you know. So in the, to try and bring governance down to all the different areas, Ashwaju created 
So of LCD. LCD is. So for that reason, the man at the center decided to withhold the allocation coming to Lagos for the local governments. But Ashwaji was undaunted. That time, Lagos was in opposition. So he had to set up and improve on the internally generated revenue. So that brought the Revenue Administration Law in 2006. LRS was born. Now, over time, with the vision also of all the subsequent governors, right mm -hmm. from Governor Fashola, Governor Ambode, and then the present governor, Mr. Governor Babajide Sonwolu. So, like I said, each one of them has actually improved on what they met by, by encouraging the development and growth of the tax authority itself. And it's mostly through technology. Part of that boost is mainly attributable to technology. Then also the very Check. important, factor, the human factor is very, very important. We cannot, you know, play with that. So being, being an autonomous agency that it became, mm. it was allowed to hire and fire, basically get in a lot of good people to come and work, a lot of um, graduates to come and help, you know, build up the agency. So technology on one side, good staff on the other side. One other area is that of training. We invest a lot in training. We're investing, uh, uh, we're, we're investing for the benefit of better service to the public. Ease of doing business. The business. Partially comes through the technology. Like I told mm. you, you don't have to leave your house to register. You don't have to leave your house to file your returns, your annual returns, whether the H1 or the Form A for individuals. You can do it while you are inside the bathroom. You can do all these things. So ease of doing business. It, it, what would be the website for them to go to? Can you um, announce the website so that our viewers can also benefit from? Or perhaps yeah. before the end of the program. Okay, for the for the e-tax. Yes, we'll do yes. that. I wish I've had to convert from using my laptop to using <laughs> your tab, your iPad. <laughs> to screenshot, you know, to screen, screenshot the whole thing. But um, in terms of the the e tax, HTTPS, make sure that the S is there because that is what. Because that's secured. That yeah. secured. Okay. Then slash e tax dot lrs dot net dot gov dot yeah so that okay. takes you straight into e tax straight into tax administration and ease of doing business did you say dot net or dot gov dot 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 net dot lrs dot net the dot gov okay that's that's a contact center you're talking about the okay, so if it's www. It, it, is that what's showing on the screen? Yes, that's 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 the one. That's the one. Etax.lrs.net. So the other one that you said, uh, .gov, that is our contact center, which is mm. www.lrs.gov. Okay. Dot ng. Mm. So those are the, the, the websites Excellent. that you can reach. Excellent. M Mr. Chairman, let's talk about what's going on right now, the pandemic, as we begin to wrap up. Um, someone asked a question. It's good to bring that question back. Uh, that's Tony Christian Liu. Oh, this Mr. Kidono 
Um, he just okay, yes. Yeah. So, okay, let's take a kid on. Yeah. Okay. okay. Let's take a it, kid on. Issue of filing annual return is not easy. Even your customer care people are not responding to a problem on, on site. First and foremost, um, Mr. Akidono, you have to, you know, um, try again tomorrow if you had issues today. And I'll tell you what is happening. If you try today, ideally, all the returns ought to have been filed between 1st of January and 31st of March. But trust Nigerians, if you say the deadline is 31st of March, it's the 28th of March, they will start, you know, filing. So that becomes a problem. Now, I tell you, we, we, we extended the filing from March to May. From May again, we moved it to June. From January to mid-June, peaceful. We were even very worried that people were not filing with all the advocacy, uh, jingles, radio, TV, uh, social media, practically ad you know, advocating for people to file. Then this week, come and see all our contact uh, center lines totally jammed. <laughs> to log in, you can log in successfully, but it just takes some time. A lot of people who are trying to log in, part of the problem is that they are not doing the right things. We have demo, mm. a lot of demo tapes. They're, they're, they're all over YouTube, all over. You can get these demo tapes who that instruct you on the best way to go about it. Mm. So we are also telling people, or we have told people, today's deadline is, is close today. We were telling people that if you have problems, call the contact center. Because of the social distancing, we're trying to keep mm. members of the public away from our various locations. Our office. But we even opened it up and allowed people to actually come to all the stations and to come to the HQ. This whole week, nothing less than a thousand people in our office every day. We had to create about 25 points for them mm. for assistance to help with the login. So I'm not sure about uh, Mr. Akidono's claim. Most likely, maybe he started today. So <laughs> I'm trying to meet that. He, <laughs> he also says he, he, we should beg you to extend registration on tax portal for civil servants in Lagos State. Ah, now you are going to let me tell you the best case. <laughs> Lagos State <laughs> officials, because there were so many of them today that we could not even finish attending to them. So we've allowed that extension till Friday, close of business Friday. Ah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Gudono, you better send a thank you message now. Let Mr. Chairman see your thank you message. <laughs> I think Mrs. Christia Lee says that um, I don't believe... Um, says, let me take the second question. Secondly, what do you do as a palliative relief to this category of taxpayer during COVID lockdown? I think it's talking about the self-employed, the artisans, the market people... And, and um, you know, the informal economy. Well, um, oh. if this is truly Tony Aliu's picture, do you really belong to the informal sector? <laughs> or to the formal sector? <laughs> assessing you might be by perception. So anyway, <laughs> on a more serious note, um, there have been several palliatives that we have looked at as an agency. The number one palliative, of course, being the extensions that we have allowed in filing. The, there's a statutory requirement, you know, that you file by March. We have magnanimously moved it to May and also moved it to June. So that's the number one palliative. Now, on a one-to-one -one basis, mm -hmm. between you and I only, Dio. Yes, sir. Unique taxpayers, we sort of allow you to pay in installments at the moment. But mm. you need to come to our office. You need to write to us. You need to engage and put us put up a payment plan. If you have mm. a payment plan with us, 
we, we can look at, you know, instrumental payments. There are some other palliative measures that we have, you know, strategized on and we have come up with them. But you know, it's a process. You know, you cannot just create palliatives and announce them and start, you know, we have to go through mm. the legal processes. Processes, yes. So we need Mr. Governor to give us an executive order. We also need some involvement of the Lagos State House of Assembly. So we have some palliatives. You know, I don't want to announce them because I don't even have yes. I don't have authority. The, the final, yes, yes, to do that yet. To come out and say, uh, and, and say this is, you know, what. But we yes. have palliatives. Just, you know, watch this space. That's all I will tell uh, <laughs> Madam Tony. Mr. Governor is working. So, so, you, so you said she's a civil servant, Lagos State Officer. <laughs> okay. Okay. So your taxes are deducted at source. But maybe you have to declare your other income. <laughs> I, hope, I hope you are listening. <laughs> I'm sure she is. <laughs> declare. You know, when you earn, you know, when you earn employment income, your salary is deducted at source. But yes. So he has properties for rental. Maybe she has a huge investment in stocks. Or a salon so, from the way she looks. Or maybe, a supermarket. Yeah, exactly. Maybe she has a salon and maybe she's even selling fabrics and making a lot of money. You know, it's, it's, it's only fair going by the social contract that you pay appropriate taxes on all those other sources of income. So the that's income. why we have Form A. Form A is there for you to declare your global income. Even if you are earning income in Dahomey or you are earning mm. in Taraba State and you are bringing it down uh, to Lagos, you know, you must try and, you know, pay some taxes. Taxation is based on where you are resident. If you are resident in Lagos, mm. do business any part of the country or outside the country, you are expected to declare and pay your taxes here in Lagos. Except there's a double treaty agreement, of course. Uh, because of time, I would ask a final question. Uh, and then people will take one from the audience as well. Mr. Chairman, would you say Lagosians are getting value for the taxes paid? A big yes. Lagosians are indeed getting value. Like I said, we've had a lot of astute you know, leaders in Lagos, a lot of people with good foresight and people who are very passionate about Lagos, people who want to, to put Lagos on the global map. Indeed, Lagos is already on the global map. Now, we all know Mr. Governor is very passionate about Lagos. We all see how he went the extra length to ensure mm. that we are safe. Either through all the press briefings, all the medical advisory that he has given us, and you know, so many other good things. We've seen he's commissioned so many projects. When he came, because of the rainy season, because of the topography of Lagos, because of all the natural problems, you know, mm -hmm. we will always have problems with the roads. A lot of people don't understand that, you know, Lagos is below sea level one. Um, what we use, the lateral that we use for, for the roads, you know, has a lifespan then we have a lot of heavy duty trucks in residential areas and you know all these things tend to damage and uh, make some problems for us in terms of fixing the roads but mr governor solved that problem in just a few months of, of, of coming in again talk about schools talk about hospitals you know he's built quite a number of isolation centers. Yes, some of them have also been with the assistance of the private sector, but he is, he's making a lot of investment. So if we start from, you know, talking about the things, if you look at the traffic, which is traffic and transportation, you know, he's done a lot. Health-wise, he's done a lot. Even in entertainment and tourism, you know, he's encouraging that greatly and he's investing in the youth to make sure that, you know, they all thrive. Once the economy is thriving, once the Lagos GDP is on the rise, everybody is happy. 
Also, mm -hmm. uh, some of the other projects, even libraries. If you mm -hmm. go to so many schools in different parts of Lagos, there's a lot of renovation that is going on of schools. If you look at the traffic situation, last mile and all the other agencies, you know, they are doing a lot. So if you take care of health, you take care of education, you are very far ahead. Not to come and talk of all the other things, making Lagos a 21st you know, century. Century state, mega city. Mega city is also a major thing that, you know, the government, his government is, is working on. So definitely, you know, people are getting value for their taxes in, in Lagos. At the end of the day, there's a lot of investment also in the, the, the blue line, the, the rail system that is going to come on stream in a, very soon, in a couple of years. Also look at the plans for the first mainland, mainland bridge. Um, yes, so, and the regional uh, road. All the regional roads, all these require a lot of investment. If everybody was paying the right taxes, maybe all these things will, will, will happen in one year. But we're very happy at the pace at which Lagos is going. Lagos is the fifth largest economy. And there's a reason for that. There's a reason why so many industries are set up in Lagos. Lagos creates an enabling environment. Look at security also. There are a lot of parts of Nigeria. By 5 o'clock, everybody's in the house. But in Lagos, you even see expatriates going out to nightclubs at night pre-COVID, of course. You know, so it's because there's an enabling environment. There's a lot of security. There's people feel safe. Now, of course, there will be some bad elements, bad eggs in some areas. So I'm not saying that that there's there's no danger, but there's very little danger because the state invests a lot of money in security. All the street lights power the streets. You know, the uh, police, Nigerian police force is a federal uh, uh, force. But Lagos is very instrumental in maintaining, you know, the force in Lagos. So really and truly, there's so much that we need to pay our taxes for so that we continue to develop as a nation, so that we continue to remain a civilized nation, so that we continue to be an investment destination for all foreign investors, because we can't do it alone. We can't develop the whole place alone. We can do with some investment from outside. So there's value. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. And my final opportunity that I want to create is for you to list to us, uh, what would you consider your top achievement under the BOS administration in LIRS? One, two, three, or four, as you may want to mention, that people can take home finally as, as we close wrap up. Okay, one major thing under the uh, BOS administration is that he's very fanatical about setting a world-class tax authority. For that reason, he has been very interested. You know, if you don't give tools to workers, then they cannot work well. He's very interested mm -hmm. in ensuring that we have the right tools. So under my administration, basically, what I'll say is the revenue has become a lot more efficient than it used to be. The revenue reaches out. Do you, do you mean revenue generation? No, no, when I say revenue, revenue authority, LRS, basically. Okay. okay. When I say revenue, I'm referring to LRS. Uh, yeah, I wanted to clear that. Yeah, there's a lot of advocacy run by my administration where on we have all the social media handles, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, we're all on it. Our website, we built a website that can that is of international standard. We have Almost any information a taxpayer will need on our website. All the laws of the Federation, all the laws of the state, it's all there. Then we have frequently asked questions. There's no, hardly any type of tax. Once you go to our website, you will read about that type of tax, how it operates, the, the, the base, the uh, payment deadlines, the sanctions. You know, it's all encompassing. It tells you everything. So 
We have all the information out. Ease of doing business. I've talked a lot about e-tax. You know, e-tax was launched 1st of October last year, and it's been very successful so far. So in terms of technology, that's a major achievement for us, and it's going to be a stepping stone to a lot of greatness that we're going to achieve, because without the taxes, we cannot develop the state. It's the most sustainable source of revenue. So even if we talk about the increase year on year, we have increased revenue to a much higher level than ever. From time to time, we are creating records, i.e. the highest amount ever generated by the LRS. So, you know, but more importantly yeah. is the service. The service that the, they say the policeman is your friend. The taxman is also your friend though. People don't want to <laughs> accept that. <laughs> People have a good experience with us in LRS. A lot of people have a good experience. If you call our contact centers, you have well-trained operators who will answer you. If they cannot answer you, they will escalate the issue, take your details, and they call you back and answer all your questions. So in terms of advocacy, in terms of technology, those are major achievements. Advocacy and technology, because also, the tax. We are also collaborating with a lot of uh, MDAs, ministries, departments, and agencies. That's you know the fact that we are all talking, talking to each other, is you know is going to really help us boost our main objective of of, of generating uh, revenue. At the end of the day, the e-tax is going to be inter integrated with databases of several other you know agencies both federal and legal state the jtv10 platform we are integrated with that so that's also a stepping stone to to many 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 great things that we expect to come to the state of lagos ladies and gentlemen we've been speaking to the chief taxman of lagos or would you rather say the tax master of lagos mr Ayo Subar, Ayo Dele Subar, thank you so much for your time for, you know, the last one hour of your time is money. And, you know, you spent that time educating Lagosian about what we need to know. And everybody's been commenting. Uh, this is a very educative session. Uh, people have talked about how it has created a better understanding for how, how the tax system works here. The, the viewership today has been also amazing. The comments are coming endlessly. Uh, we're just able to project some uh, of them. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, someone has asked for the contact details. I believe that officials of the LIRS are also watching. So if you do go to the LIRS um his Twitter page or Instagram page, I want to believe that. Uh, so they would post the numbers that you were asking for, Mr. Moyolua. You said we need the contact center numbers. Uh, I'm sure that you can find it on their Twitter and on their social media page. It's well, been it's, a it's, great time. If I can talk, if I can just quickly chip in that, the, the, the contact center is 0700 call LIRS. <laughs> So if you remember that 0700 call LRS, which is 0700 2255. Let me have 0700 call LRS. Please call that again, sir. 0700 22. So that's 0700. Yeah. 2255. Yeah. 54. 77. Okay, so everyone will project that on the screen for you. 22, 55, 54, 77. You can call those numbers to speak to a tax uh, officer of the LIRS. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman, for your time. Thank you all the team there at LIRS and all the people who are making the Greater Lagos possible. We're very grateful and we pray can that I, the administration of the budget. Can I say thank you yes, to you, sir. You're doing, you're doing a great job. I have to acknowledge this work you're doing. It's not very easy. Thank you, sir. Uh, um, I can call you a young man because you are much younger than I am. At your age, Absolutely. 
just be a shining example. You know, a knight in shining armor. You you are you are already a role model for so many people Thank who you, are sir. coming up. For you to achieve so much in so little time, Thank I've looked at Thank I've you, looked sir. at the list of the various guests that you have had on this your talk show, and it's very very impressive. Thank you, Thank very you much. sir. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. I think that Mr. Governor is doing a lot of work that we almost come together to support. And you know, the team of his administration is Adjumoshe, which is that all of us have a responsibility and, you know, we all have a role to do it. So wherever we find ourselves, I'm on the board of SUBEB, no matter what, either you're a teacher, either you're a civil servant, whatever you find yourself, we must know that making Lagos a 21st century mega city is our responsibility. And thank you, Mr. Chairman, for the work, in particular, all the staff of LIRS for helping to bring in the money for which we're able to use to make Lagos a 21st century mega city. God bless you, everyone. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow as we speak about waste with the managing director of LOMA. Thank you, Mr. Chairman of LIRS, and have a great evening. And you too. Thank